more news on the guys in um, Washington that hurt that um, that Wazoo girl. Um, Pullman sex limes and videotape. How a knight with a orn star turned into an ape case. God, I hate up to say those things like that. It's so stupid too. December fourth, two thousand seven. Yikes. After his night out with Reed, witnesses say shot pictured in court quickly shaved his beard. Five years ago, Kyle Schott was at a Nike football camp in Palo Alto, California, heading into his senior year at Liberty High School in Renton. The all-league tight end with, a subject, with the subject of recruiting interest from Arizona and Oregon, but holding out for something closer to home. I want to, um, I want to hear from the UW, he told an editor from um, Scout, Scout.com. At that t at the time, when playing tight end at Liberty, Shot was ranked among the nation's top recruits by Scout.com. Wow, he must be a lot bigger than he looks. Actually, he also made a mark in wrestling, playing second in the class AAA re uh, Region Two tournament as a junior. But Shot wasn't just destined for um, college athlete athletics. <laughs> collegiate, collegiate athletics. He started his freshman year in 2003 at Washington State University, planning to eventually have a stable career and obviously make a lot of money, have a lot of friends, travel the world, marry, start a family, not get divorced, and retire somewhere beautiful and peaceful, according to his MySpace profile, which has since been removed from, from the site. Four years later, he was sitting in a Pullman courtroom accused of ape. What can I call that besides that? I feel so weird to call it that. Sorry, I've been burning the candle at both ends, you guys. Sorry. This thing's been driving me nuts. When I saw that car, it's just been driving me nuts, and I couldn't figure out where I've seen it before. But I found it. So I have a, like, kind of a load off me right now, but still there's all this other stuff. I feel like this is huge, you guys. I really feel like these... I really feel like they're the, they, they're the creepers. I really do. And what's really scary is that the police know, and they let him go. I think they did. In my opinion, I think they did. Because somehow someone else was involved, possibly, you know, law. I don't know. I mean, should it look that way? Turns out, settling down was merely Scott's goal after college. First, there was the years-long party that dominates the lifestyle of many a Wazoo undergraduate. <laughs> Scott's MySpace profile page shows him holding an American flag, arm draped around a blonde co-ed, shirt open, gut hanging out over, over white pants. Here he notes that living in Pullman and drinking pretty much go hand in hand. Oh lordy. Another friend's page shows Scott shot, Scott shot, shot Scott, and two friends standing next to a club with the old Studio 54 logo. The city is an the city isn't identified, but the caption says it's the club. Oh, sorry, guys. My God, I'm so tired. I need to go to bed again. Man, again, <laughs> I do go to bed. I really do sleep. In fact, I actually sleep a lot. Um, uh, the city isn't identified, but the caption says it's the club Kyle got kicked out of. Oh, so him and Nino got stuff in common. <laughs> I still need to look his name. His name sounds way more familiar. I'm just keep thinking maybe he got arrested with one of these guys was arrested with Enon like Enon knows him from back in the day I keep feeling that I don't know why this past September 21st shot pleaded not guilty to one count of second degree felony you know what and three related burglary charges I don't know what I can and can't say but it just seems so silly he was released the same day on a hundred thousand dollar bond he has since dropped out of school. Holy oh, crap, I need just to stop, man. This is crazy. And I'm, this is not just me yawning my normal yawn stuff. This is really tired yawning. Um, I just need to get this video done, and then I'll be, then I can go to bed.
He has since dropped out of school and under court order is living with his mother in Renton. He is not allowed to drink and is prohibited from being within half a mile of a sorority fraternity or dormitory building. You don't think he can find... This is so stupid. I mean, sure, he shouldn't be around there, but but the thing is, he's going to find it anywhere you want. Anywhere. anywhere. I mean... It's just like cast, castrating... Um, you know, the, when they were talking about doing that, oh, we'll just castrate the, you know, the apis or whatever, and, you know, that'll take care of that. No, it won't. I mean, it might even make it worse, because they, they I mean, that's their weapon. So they'll find any weapon to use. I mean, it can be anything. But that, but, but if they have one attached, more than likely they'll use that, but it is considered a weapon. And so, I always, like, cringed at hearing... He's going to castrate someone. I'm just like, oh, that's the worst thing you could do. I'm just going to make it so much worse. Um, court records from both King and Whitman counties, where Scott has lived, indicate no previous run-ins with the law. Hmm. The Whitman County prosecutor, Dennis Tracy, says he couldn't find any prior arrests in the background search. Whether Scott was involved in a blank, blank, blank of a girl at Kappa Alpha Theta sorority on Wazoo's campus will be decided in the court of law. But the story of how Scott came out to be on the wrong end of the such accusations began the night he met Christopher Jack Reed, an adult film actor working under the pseudonym Jack Venice. Reed also fa- faces charges of you know what and burglary. Reed and Scott went on met on September twelfth. Hmm. Oh my God! They did this on September thirteenth, you guys. Their subsequent night of um, uh, carousing, travers, traversed Wazoo bars, off-campus housing, fraternities and sororities, and ended up to, with a call to the police at 4.40. Oh my god. You guys, this is looking, I mean, this is just crazy. On September 3rd, 4.40 a.m. on September 13th, oh my god, informing the authorities at a Kappa Alpha Theta sorority sister had woken while being sexually assaulted. Now the high school football star from Renton and the porn star from Los Angeles will stand trial in Whitman County after allegedly breaking into two other sororities, flashing students, attempting to get into the fraternity, and finally you know wedding a student. Shot probably didn't begin his night planning for sexual assault. He was likely just looking for a bit of fun with a bizarre character he met at a bar. But sometimes when the alcohol starts flowing, good people make very bad choices. Last July, Reed was was a contestant on a television game show entitled Without Prejudice. The program created by the Game Show Network and the NAACP employs a panel of judges who are presented with increasing bits of information before who are presented with increasing bits of information before awarding one contestant $25,000. Reed lasted through the round that explored contestants' education and work history, revealing that he finished high school in 2000 before joining the Marines there you go where he was part of the initial invasion of Iraq a US Marine Corps staff member of the enlistment office in Quantico confirms that Reed served from 2000 to to 2004 does he know does he know them does he know does he know the officers does he know Bain does he know Kopaka you know he does. Marine spokesman Marine spokesman Maj, uh, Manuel De La Rosa says he was stationed in uh, Najaf, Iraq, in 2003 for Operation Iraq Freedom. After Reed in 2003, I'm about to look it up. After Reed finished his tour of duty, he and a friend were trying to decide what to do next. The subject of adult film film came up, where most people might joke about the possibility of their supplementing their income in the in the flesh trade. Reed took the career option seriously, heading to L.A. and quickly landing jobs. According to the imdb.com, Reed has made 95 adult films since 2004, including On Your Knees, B-I-E-G-C-H, and Five Guy Cream Pie 22. Ugh, that's sick. During the game show, Reed told panelists he makes 600 per scene, netting an annual income of about $180,000. In 2005, Reed 
began appearing in films produced by California-based Shane's World. Oh my god, I've heard that, of that thing. Where have I heard that recently? Oh no. I feel a rabbit hole coming on. An outfit run by Megan Stokes at a trip. Oh my gosh. Okay. You know who's... Oh my gosh, you know who is... Um, shit. So, the other person that was there, he is affiliated with that person too. Um, yeah, that's what they were doing, you guys. I think they had something on a... I think, I think that house was wired. I think that they had something on a hard drive in there. That's why the TV was off like it was. Or, like, you know, unplugged. Like it, like it wasn't getting any, like, internet or anything to it. So it was still on because it was shining on the wall. For, like, days they left it on. Um, but it, from in the beginning, it was said that they heard rifling around through drawers. You know, rummaging through drawers. And that then they thought it was a party. And they just went to bed. It was what the initial, the first thing was. But they heard, that, then they thought it was the frat guys. But they heard a bunch of people rummaging through drawers and running up throughout the house. And I bet you they were looking for um, that thumb drive. I bet you they had, so maybe, here's my, here's my thinking here. If they had gotten in there, and, like, monitored that house, like, put cameras or something somewhere... And then they had it hooked up to something like that into, like, you know, hidden in, like, a the back of some, maybe some place where they where they didn't have a, you, you know, thumb drive put in or something. And then they had that going in, you know, or a storage or, or an SD card or whatever you want to call it. Um, and then they were going in there. Maybe, maybe they only went in there to get that that night. Maybe that's what that was all about. Maybe it wasn't. I don't know. Maybe it has nothing to do with it. But I really have a bad feeling about this. And the reason... It's because of what that freaking captain said when he first started telling about, you know, what happened. And then he said, and none of them were sexually assaulted. I mean, he put it in the weirdest place. It was out of the blue. It, it, it didn't fit. Where, wherever he put it, it didn't fit at that point. Nothing fit at that point. But that really didn't fit. That was really weird. And ever since then, I've thought, if they were lying about it, I thought that they, that's exactly what probably happened. And I'm starting to really think that now. God. And, I, you know, if they're making movies, maybe that snuff film really did happen, you guys. Maybe that really did freaking happen. God, I was hoping I wouldn't have to say that. My God. I mean, it's right up... It's... it's. As soon as I saw that guy in that wazoo red jacket, my, I just literally was like, Bleh. like, I... My, I just jumped out of my skin thinking that, that that's who that guy was. And then I decided to con um, the car looked familiar too so I decided just to focus on that and I'll do the rest after that once I figure out what that is because it seems so freaking familiar. And then that's what it is. So now we need to we need to know who those four people were. I'm walking in that that guy dropped off. Man, this is crazy. Based on Shane's world, and and here and then you got Ferris out there. Sorry, but I'm throwing Ferris under the bus. Him, him and his film crew. I mean, he. The more I see that guy, and the way he runs, the way he even talks and acts anymore, he just creeps me out. I mean, he never. I never really liked him. He didn't really, you know, like. I don't think he's funny. I don't think you know anything like that. There, there are things. There's stuff that isn't funny, but. He never really creeped, creeped me out. Well, now he creeps me out. Big time. He just thinks he's all that and then some. And I think he thinks he might be a black guy. Just saying. <laughs> um, Megan Stowe, that, attract, uh, that attracted national attention when, it's, when it started ho um, hosting, yep, college invasions. Wherein the, co wherein the company would take professional female adult actors on tour, set up parties at colleges, and film undergraduate males having sex with pros. Since then, the company has gained increasing notoriety. Stokes appeared on the Tyra Banks show this past May 17th on an episode entitled Dorm Porn. Oh my god, you guys, this is going a bad route here. 
to discuss the use of amateur college students for professional f uh, pornography. Last February, Shane's World inked a production deal with Frat House Films, at which point they decided to flip the gender switch on their invasion approach. According to the press release from, oh my god, from Shane's World at the time, the plan was to have Reed travel across campus in search of willing co-eds, hence the name College Amateur Tour. From his first tour stop, Reed traveled to Houston. A posting of YouTube reveals the process consisting of driving around and picking up girls in parking lots. In one clip, Reed stops a woman in a form-fitted shirt, t-shirt, telling us, telling his driver, "Oh, she's really, she's ready for it." They pull up alongside her, and I, I remember I saw that video. They pull up alongside her. We're on your, we're on our way to San Marcos right now to bang some girls out front of their out in front of everybody. You want you want to be a part of it, Reed announces. I mean, wow, what a smooth approach, huh? Jesus. Oh, ain't no Jesus up in him. Oh no, I pass on that one, thanks, she replies. Reed persists, come on, you got the tongue ring, that slutty t-shirt, what a dick, God. The woman defends her choice of attire before again saying no thanks and walking away. Reed's advances were not always rejected. Uh, Shane's World released two DVDs this year starring Reed as Jack Venice and a handful of female college students as as witting partners. The inaugural video has filmed entirely in Texas with a second release after a trip through the Midwest. People who saw Reed in Pullman say it was hard to tell exactly that um, what he was doing in town. Some remember him talking about filming porn over the weekend, but no one remembers seeing any kind of video camera. But Reed may have packed Wazoo simply, picked Wazoo simply because of the school's reputation for, rival, for rivalry. Lieutenant Commander Chris Tennant, yeah, the one, one, this Chris Tennant, this particular person is one of the ones that is not on the force anymore because of what he, you know, because of his mis misconduct. So there we have that, right? <sighs> Tennant, the department says that since Washington State gained notoriety as party school up in the 80s, it's become a destination spot for people looking for a wild time. After drunken riot, rioting broke out in 1998, the school hit at number nine on the Princeton Review 1999 list of biggest party schools. Police Sergeant Dan Dorns says that despite turning himself in, Reed offered no hint as to what he was doing in Pullman or what happened September 12th and 13th. He refused to cooperate as far as as far as making any statements to all of his to to all at all to us when he was arrested when we arrested him. Interestingly, Shane's world dis disavows any knowledge of Reed's trip to Pullman, sending an email saying only. We have no comment. You need to talk to Jack, as he was there on his own personal time. If Reed was in Pullman looking for willing women to bolster his f uh, filmography, perhaps that's what drew S Scott to the porn star. On MySpace, Shot says one of his interests is doing crazy shit and taping. Uh huh. One of Shot's roommates told police Scott met, I don't know how to say Scott or Shot, I don't know, met Reed at a bar through. The roommate wasn't though. The roommate wasn't sure which one. Police records show the two were in Valhalla. Oh my God! There's that word. A sports. Uh huh. Okay. A sports bar at the top of the College Hill near the Wazoo Bookstore. Earlier in the night, and may have, and may, early in the night, and may have met there. In Valhalla, aside from take, taking in the game of the week, patrons drink typically drink neon green cocktails. There's that green word, and pictures of beer while loud music blares through the dance floor. Four blocks down Colorado Street from Valharis, Doublefields, uh, known, for, known formally as Mike's Place, is a two-story bar that features a large dance floor and a, an extensive liquor selection. A manager confirms Reed was there during last call, adding that he had a little had, that he has he was a little forward with one of the bartenders. Hardly an unusual occurrence. When the cops started looking for suspects following the you-know-what report, they were able to track down a credit card receipt from Stubblefields with his name on it. The receipt was dated September 13th at 1.54 a.m. He had ordered a little more than $10 in drinks and tipped well. I better check my storage to see if I got enough room on here. Hopefully we have enough room. Okay, so College Hill Bar shut 
their doors at 2 a.m., so it wasn't possible for Shot or Reed to get another to get to another watering hole. Also, heading home after last call was Ryan Maker, who says he and his roommate got back to their apartment just down the street from Stubblefields shortly after 2, and he had a few friends over to play beer pong. A short time later, he said Shot and Reed were at the door. Marker let them in, thinking they must be his roommate's friends. The two guests downed a couple of beers, and Reed offered to fork over some cash to cover the cost, Maker said. That's when things started to get a little weird. Reed held up a 20, then pulled it back and wiped his blank with the bill, then offered it to Maker, who declined to accept the cash. Jeez. Next, Reed offered, offered him another $400 for the rights to film sex in his room throughout the weekend. <sighs> Not only was Maker unwilling to let him use his room, he said he didn't believe Reed. He wasn't carrying a camera. Faced with doubt, Reed went to a, went to a computer, brought up an adult website featuring his films, turned to the guys in the apartment, dropped his pants, and said, No, really, look how big my you-know-what is. God. With that, Maker kicked Shot and Reed out of his house, his home. No lie, man. God, what a, uh, the whole encounter lasted about 15 minutes, he says. And what was Shot doing this whole time? Like most people who encountered the duel, Maker and his roommate didn't have a distinct recollection of Shot. He just seemed to be going along with Reed, Maker said. Maker adds that while his experience in the wee hours September 13th was beyond the norm, Reed's behavior wasn't weird enough to warrant a call to the cops. In College Hill, nomadic party scene, absurdity is par for the course. On the night Maker described his encounter with the duo in question, a girl wearing leopard ears, red stilettos, and a black track pants was checking email on the couch. Next, Scott, Scott and Reed headed towards Linden Street, lined almost entirely by fraternity and sorority houses. Their first stop was the Pi Beta Phi Sorority, a mansion-like house where members' hair and makeup look impeccable even in workout attire. I'm a member there told police that around 3.30 a.m. she noticed a tall man with shaggy brown hair and a beard, which matched Scott's description, standing on their balcony, apparently signaling to someone inside. About 20 minutes later, she told police she noticed him with another man in the hallway outside her room. The taller of the two shut her door. The taller of the two shut her door from the hallway. She wasn't sure how long they were. They were there, but no other incidents were reported, and police were um, unable to determine a point of entry at the house. According to police records, Reed and Shot next step was Alpha Gamma Rho, a fraternity with tall white com- columns on its front porch. While the, st- while the stereotypical fraternity has bare floors, stained walls, used furniture, and enormous flat screen television sets, Alpha Gamma Rho's interior is pristine, more like a female's Greek counterpart. Member Branton Rainier thinks that he may have that he may have been that may have been how shot and Reed ended up on their house at their house in the first place expecting to find women. Oh, that, that it was they thought it was a sorority. The 21-year-old Ra- uh, Rainier says he and Alpha Gamma Rho President Ryan Lance were studying for exams in the first floor dining hall, which looks out into the foyer and through the front door. At around three, he said he saw these two men punching buttons on the house's keypad, attempting to gain entry. They went out to see what was going on and found a tall guy with brown hair and a beard accompanying a short, stocky, blonde Reed. They were very drunk, Reed, Rainer says. Reed did all the talking. He started out asking if he could buy beer off the guys. Lance says he took out a wad of cash and offered them $1,000 for booze. He says the total in Reed's hands was probably close to 20 or $30, Rainier said. <laughs> oh, those stars just think they're so they're hot, don't they? Then Reed asked if he could just get a drink of water. Rainier again told him no, at which point Rainier noticed a bottle that someone had used as a tobacco spittoon. It was filled with gooey brown saliva. He was like, I'll drink that tea, recalls. Oh, yuck. Oh, gross. It just gave me, like, almost wanted to throw up. Ugh, I'm not going to read that. Rainer told Reed it was chew, chew spit. Reed said, I'll drink it anyway. I'm into that. Ooh. 
notes right here who says he didn't notice much about shot except that he apparently injured his wrist or hand which was wrapped in something shot didn't say anything Rainier says all shot could do was giggle finally shot and retook off heading toward B Street Lance and Rainier went back to study and both of them said they wished they had called the cops but it didn't occur to them at the time in a college community it doesn't seem that out of place for someone to be acting all drunk and retarded Lance says the entrance to Wazoo's uh, Delta Gamma Sorority looks like a hotel lobby meticulously hand written um, posters remind members about upcoming events and Grand Piano sits in a lounge just beyond the foyer here a freshman member told police she woke up with a male about 5 feet 8 inches there's that 5 feet 8 inches you guys <sighs> about 5 feet 8 inches tall with blonde and blonde entered the house through the window she followed him into she she followed him into the hallway and down the steps where he led where he let in his companion a tall man with shaggy brown hair and a beard the freshman told police that the shorter of the two played around on their piano which attracted the attention of a senior member the senior told police she had been studying and listening to an ipod at around 4 a.m when she heard the sound of the piano in the foyer she walked out to find the freshman member standing near shot i said what the hell is going on she said um, she told police the freshman glanced towards her room when Reed where Reed and was tickling the ivories he stopped and walked into the foyer shot made a comment about Reed being a good pianist I said sure I guess you're a good pianist the senior member told police as he was walking past her Reed asked her to clarify whether she'd said pe pianist or penis oh, God she told him she said pianist and in response, he made a comment about whipping whipping it out. The two men told the sorority sisters they were there to play a prank on a friend in the house. But when the senior member asked who, they said not to worry about it. She told them to get, you know what, out of the, get the fuck out of the house. <laughs> get the fuck out of this house. Again, most of the interaction was between Reed and the girls. The old, the older member said both he and Shot seemed intoxicated. As for Shot, she said. He is, his composure when he was at the door he seemed I mean I would use the word sketchy but he seemed ready to leave really no one else reported seeing shot and read until 4.40 a.m. when police got a call from a woman at Kappa Alpha Theta sorority saying she had just been you know what it the victim identified as KNE in court records told police she was sleeping on the floor of a friend's room when a, sa when a, when a sound woke her up Two men were in her room. She was menstruating at the time. She said her tampon had been removed. God damn it. And she felt that she had uh, been penetrated by something but couldn't be sure. The man ran off uh, when she awoke. She told them she had seen a taller guy with a brown, long brown, longer brown hair and another in a white t-shirt. The break, the break in at Kappa Theta, Alpha Theta was attributed to a faculty closing mechanism a faulty closing mechanism on the door lock president ann meyer said um says by email that both she and the victim have been instructed by the sorority's national headquarters in indiana not to discuss the assault did you hear that you guys did you just hear that did you just hear that let's read that again ann meyer says she says by email that both she and the victim have been instructed by the the sorority's national headquarters in Indiana not to discuss the assault. We're, we are dealing with things the best we know how and looking at ways to improve the safety and security in our home. She writes before signing off, what a B-I-C... <laughs> Scott didn't say much about to his roommates the next day about his night with the porn star, according to statements taken by police. He said he was up late with, with supposed, supposedly a porn star one roommate said in a recorded interview, it sounded like they were up, up to mischievous stuff. I didn't get the details of what they were doing. No, that's something Kyle wouldn't do, says another of Shot's roommates um, before saying that um, Shot asked him not to discuss the incident publicly and refused to answer any additional questions. Shot spent most of his life in a quiet suburban neighborhood near Renton. 
the house where he grew up as an olive up is an olive green split level in a wooded hills across from Maple Hills Elementary School. Schott's mother Jacqueline worked for Alaska Airlines. His father Richard was an insurance uh, was in the insurance business. The day before Christmas 1991, his parents separated. His father moved to Snohomish and his mother stayed in the house where she remains. None of his family members, including an, an older sister, are willing to be interviewed. And it, why did they have to bring the family into it? That's weird. In addition to the more de debauched in, um, interests, Schott's online profile says he likes pottery and believes people ought to possess a good sense of humor, trust, style, etiquette, and genu genuineness. At 6 feet 2, Schott is, a, is big and athletic. Tr um, traits that served him well in competition as a uh, lib uh, Liberty Patriot. As a sophomore, he was the youngest wrestler in the district to qualify for the state tournament in the, in the uh, 189 wow, pound weight class. As a junior, he placed second in the regional tournament. Though he never placed at the state level in one match, he pinned an opponent in 14 seconds. But his real passion was football. During the summer of 2020, 2002, he got his shot to impress scouts at the college level at a Nike training camp in Palo Alto, where he covered the 40-yard dash in 4.8 seconds. While there, he had a chance to run through the stadium at Stanford. It's huge, he told the scout.com. In a photo from his time in California, he's sporting a sleeveless training camp t-shirt, shaggy bleached hair, and a closely cropped beard. He isn't smiling. In his senior year, Schott was named All-League tight end, only one of only two players of, at Liberty to earn such a de um, designation. But it wasn't quite enough. Schott didn't get the scholarship offer to play in the Pac-10. So after graduating in 2003, he headed east to Pullman. How long is this thing? My God. Holy crap. Like a storybook. Um... I need to make sure I've got... I, I better make sure I've got room on here, because I... Okay, where did I leave off here? Fortify ranking... Wow, I went that far down. Okay, I'm going to stop this for now. For now. Okay, this is where we left off before, that he was heading... He was headed east to Pullman. So, beyond the matching physical descriptions at each of the report each of the reported break-ins, the police had little to go on, but Pullman is a small town and with an intimate campus community. The morning of September 13th, Lance handed or headed to his first class. He sat next to the girlfriend of one of his fraternity brothers. She told him about, about a friend whose brother was dating a woman who had been, you know, aped, you know, that thing, that, you know, uh, it so ticks me out that we can't say that. I mean, it's just a normal word that, that you use just to describe. I mean, it's like, ugh. Don't get me started. Anyway, had been you know what during the night. So stupid. As he listened to her describe what happened, he says, I put it together, and then I was like, oh, crap. He then sent a text message to Rainier, who thought he might have seen shot before, though at the time he couldn't place him. Rainier, who works as a bouncer at Pete's Bar and, and Grill in Pullman, remembered seeing a shot come in with a mutual friend. He looked up the friend's Facebook page and found a photo that looked like the guy he had seen the night before. Rainier called the friend and asked him if the guy in the photo had a, t had a hand injury of some kind. The friend replied that shot had recently gotten stitches. How many people are you going to have? How many people are you going to have that same description and the cut on his hand? He asked. Rainier and Lance called the cops and sent them a photo of Shot via email. Police then tracked Shot down at his house, which is within walking distance of the Greek system. According to Sergeant Sam Sorum's report, Shot was nervous when the officer showed up at the house at 12.40 p.m. on September 14th. Isn't that weird, you guys? This was done, what they did was, set, was well, it would, it would be actually September 14th, but it was like, you know, 13th, 14th, just seems weird. Too many coincidences, and this is way long ago. So this is this is something that happened in two thousand and seven, and on Wazoo campus. So never keep that in mind. This is not, but but there may be a connect. I mean, I'm just saying that. I mean, it's all 
pure speculation, my opinion, just my digging and stuff and finding connects here and there. And this is who I think was with those guys, the one that turned Kopaka in and, or made the phone call there, you know, the 911 call. And the other one that's driving the car, I believe that's the car from Linda Lane. But I'm not, but I have nothing to prove. I can't prove that. All I've got is what, you know, the Linda Lane footage and this, this other footage. So, uh, yeah. So, anyway. Um, so, shot had stubble on his face, but not a full beard. Two of Shot's roommates would later tell police that he'd had a beard but shaved it off the day after his night out with Reed. Later, one of the women who saw the two that night would pick Shot out of a lineup, giving him a 4 or 5 out of 10. A ranking of how certain she was was that the man she saw at the sorority, noting that his facial features looked familiar, but the, but the man she'd seen had a beard. Boom, boom. How cool to that? Shot was arrested and agreed to give a statement downtown. Or a statement. Downtown, he told police, Reed, whom he knew he'd only known as Jack, confirming the victim's account of the incident by saying he watched while Reed spooned the victim, placed a hand on her buttocks, and then placed a finger in her coochie mm, coochie buku. He also handed Reed a condom, he told police. Well, here's the thing with that one. This dude is not innocent if he's handing his partner, his guy, you know, his one that's doing the, the dirty down there, a condom. That's not normal. Standing in a room while you're doing something to a female that is not that she you didn't, she didn't give you permission to do, and she was asleep, and he pulled and and she had a you know what inside she was on her period, and he pulled that out. Can you imagine? I mean, it's it's volatile anyway, and it's just sickening anyway to have something like that done to you. But then to do something like that, like I mean. Knowing a guy, they'd probably just rip it out. You know, not like slow. Like, I mean, you just... Oh, man. I, I just cringe. I'm like, I'm like putting my legs together right now. It's like, it just sounds oh, so awful. Um, yeah, but who does that? Oh, then he handed him a condom. What the hell? That is just weird. That's just wrong. Yeah, standing there and I'm going to hand you this. That's just, no, that's... He's... That's an accomplice. That's an accomplice. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Police retracted Reed and Shot's steps that night, or retraced. I kept. I said retracted last time when I did this too, but I did one already, but it didn't take. In the I didn't have enough room apparently. I don't know why it didn't take. It was really weird. To, a couple of things after after I did this one took, but this one didn't take. It was uh, yeah, very strange. So anyway, he retraced Reed and Shot's steps that night, picking up a credit card receipt from a waitress at Double Fields who saw them together. They, um, here they got the name. Christopher Jack Reed traced him to Lo um, Los Angeles and obtained a warrant for his arrest. As soon as news that a porn star from L.A. was sought in connection with the you-know-what in Pullman, it hit the internet. The investigation took on a life of its own. Discussion boards heated up, act acting as judge and jury. Some called for Reed's head. So ugly he has to break into sorority houses at night with with help and you know what young girls he is going to learn about night you know wedding in prison if he gets there alive writes the prophet on youtube another one says pervert echoes rob robe 2286 i hope he did i hope he gets what he deserves but with wrongful but with wrongful duke lacrosse you know what charge you know what accusations looming in the not so distant past mm, that's an interesting one Oh, I'm, yeah, okay, I remember that. Some um, armchair investigators focus their venom on the victim. Yeah, and this is this is what's sick about this, you, you guys. I mean, this is the hardest. They don't put the person that did this to you on, on stand. They put the person that had it done to them on stand, and they're brutal. They are brutal. And I can only imagine what this girl went through and what the other girl, you know, where they, in what was it recently, you know, she actually... They had all the evidence. I mean, they, I mean, they had his DNA on her shirt sleeve, and it matched. Yet, they didn't have enough evidence. I mean, how, you know, how'd she get? You know, what? How's she gonna get something like that? <laughs> Seems a little weird. Yeah. 
good old boys. It's like all those. It's like all those judges and the juries and all that stuff. All those panels have alumni on them or whatever. I mean, is that just what if? I mean, that's just scary as oh, that's so scary. That is so scary. That's like that's one of those like um, like fever dreams, you know? Oh my god! Or you you do. Ugh. I don't even like those things. Are horrible. So. That sick, my boy, writes YouTube com commenter Tinny, uh, Tinnin of Reed. Stupid biatches whose sick personalities are way diff when they're drunk. You d Ugh. So are guys. What's the deal? I know this is bullshit. Writer's asterisk says that person who claims to know Reed on CrimeRant.com. She probably thought about what she did after it was over and didn't want people to know about it, then cried, you know what? Oh, you, you do B-A-S-T-A-R-D. News reports opted to limit description to the less graphic spooning part of shot statement, a term more associated with cuddling than penetration. Speculation that the incident was videotaped, right there, you guys, think about that one, videotaped, circulated. Police say they are unaware of any such tape. Speaking from, speaking from his, my cat, sorry, you guys, my cat's walking around the back of the chair, then coming back around to get on my lap and wants me to love her, and she's purring, so you might hear her. <laughs> what you doing? Hmm? What are you doing? Okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. I had to flip the phone. Okay. So, <laughs> you silly girl. <laughs> she's not saying, she's not taking no for an answer. Um, it sounded like there were, a, okay, where did I go? <sighs> wow, what did this phone do when I was not working? When I was being loved, when I'm being loved on? It's enough. No claws, woman. Man, I only got one hand to do this. Where did this thing happen? What happened to this thing? Hold on, let me pause here for a minute. Okay. Now we got it. <clears throat> Speaking from his home in Houston, Reed's father maintains his son's innocence. He says he encouraged Reed to turn himself in. <coughs> after, posting, after posting bail, the young Reed returned to Los Angeles. <coughs> oh, excuse me. I didn't do the things that he said I did, Reed says in a phone call before declining to discuss the night and asking that he may not forget. <laughs> Sonny, what are you doing? Uh, you, she's not taking over an answer. Not, not, not. <laughs> she's, she, right now, so if you're hearing these things, she's rubbing up against the phone. She's like, I... No, she's... <laughs> she's heard into the phone. Oh, sorry, you guys. We just got to hear it for a little bit. It might, it might, maybe it so soothes you. I love hearing a cat her. You're silly. So what she likes to do, she likes me to do, she likes me to take, kind of almost, how do I put it? Almost like kind of, it's not squish her nose, but put a little bit of pressure on her nose while I'm scratching it. And then, and then uh, like at the very end of it, and then she'll look up. And her mouth will be open a little bit, and she's purring with her mouth open. And it's that's when she gets that <laughs> kind of sound. <laughs> that's what she just did on the, on, to the. She's probably to fall off my lap. And that, when she does that, she grabs her claws, go in my legs, like ah. I'm wearing leggings, and that would not be happy. Okay, now we're back to normal. She's down. <laughs> I didn't do the things they said I did. Reed says in the phone call. Okay. Before declining to discuss the night and asking that he not be contacted again, his. Spokane attorney Chris Bugby. <laughs> uh, he bugged me. <laughs> Distributed a press release start stating, We are confident that when this matter is concluded, he will be absolved of all allegations against him. Reed spoke briefly to a reporter from KXLY in Spokane who got in touch with him, and when the warrant was issued in Sept September, he told the reporter that because he gets paid to have sex, he wouldn't need to, you know, what someone, adding that he was too drunk that night to remember anything. So there you go. He was too drunk. How does he know what he didn't do? How does he know what he said he didn't do? And that's not what, you know, wedding is. It's That's anger. That's like t taking control. That's like, 
like you know it's not that's not a pleasure and who knows if being a porn star is a pleasure thing I don't who knows I don't think it probably is but definitely not for the women I wouldn't think but um he's making I mean that whole that statement right there is just stupid I mean come on we all know that as for Shot, the Wazoo Enrollment Office confirmed that he's dropped out of school. Both Shot and Reed pleaded not guilty to all charges. Shot's trial is currently set for December 17th, but Prosecutor Tracy expects it to be rescheduled to February. Reed's has been pushed back to, to November. The You Know What care charge carries a maximum penalty of, of life imprisonment, and does, as does first-degree burglary charge. Burglary charges can be instated when someone breaks into a residence with the intent of committing a crime. In regard to the first degree burglary charge, intent to commit assault was used as the basis when charging Reed and shot. Tracy says the pair is also a alleged to have stolen small items like cans of pop and the pair of sunglasses. The remaining charges carry maximum penalties of 5 to 10 years. If convicted, Reed and Schott may also have to register as sex offenders. Well, they should have to do that anyway, I would think. That should be a given. On any given night, students on College Hill can be found drinking, fishing for one-night stands, passed out, or even exposing themselves in public. Viewed through this prism, prism while Schott and Reed's behavior on the night in question might have raised a few eyebrows, encountering the duo, duo wouldn't have shocked many students. Now this is the kind of shit that pisses me off. This person's almost warranting, like almost, you, you know, saying this is okay. I mean, they, I mean, that's what happens, you know, that's what happens on the college campus, you know, we just get drunk, blah, blah. Well, you don't take something without someone's permission, especially something like that. I mean, you might take a cigarette out of a pack or whatever, but you don't do that. And you don't take the you don't take their egos either. <laughs> I don't know why that popped in my brain. I don't even need egos. Okay, oop, that was my chair. For most undergrads, the the consequences of such behavior rarely amount to more than a crippling hangover. When a student does get apprehended, the offense is usually minor, but once in a while, as with what is alleged to have gone on with Scott and Reed, or shot and Reed, it's far more serious. You know, wedding of a stranger, however, is especially rare. <laughs> Police lieutenant, commander, tenant, na na na. Not he's one of the guys I believe that that um. In fact, he is one of the guys that was let go because of that. Well, not let go. He retired early, so he still gets his pension and everything. Um, because he was mis, yeah, he was a lot of misconduct going on there. Uh, with with the um girls, yeah, with all sorts of stuff. They're just... Uh, yuck. Adding that alcohol is almost always involved when the department arrests students. They're experiencing... They're experiment. Listen to this. Listen to this one. They're experimenting with all these freedoms, he says. They get in over their heads and they do something they wouldn't do in a sober moment. Does that change responsibility? No. I mean, he... That right there just made me just feel yucky because I just see him doing what you know he's, he's just like nonchalant about it that's what I see him being like really nonchalant but but yeah this read is a cocky son of a gun and I'll show you here let me find this and I'll, I'll leave this at, I'll end it with this if I can find it quickly <laughs> so this is a video he made it's all ass bro I gotta get on the other side of her oh she's ready for it <laughs> Hi. Hi. I'm Jack Venice. Hi. You might know me from such films as Meat Hook, Sodomy 5, Shane's World. <laughs> hey, come on. Hey, be in our movie. Oh. Come here, come here. Before you... Before, I want to read your shirt. Everyone loves a dirty cow. Yes. <laughs> that t-shirt is screaming it. Well, listen. We're here from L.A. and we're making a dirty movie. We're on our way to San Marcos right now to bang some girls out in front of everybody. <laughs> And we want you to be a part of oh, it. Oh, no, I'll pass on that one, thanks. Come on, you got the oh. tongue ring, the slutty t-shirt. French manager. This is not a slutty t-shirt. In a good way, no. in a good way. <laughs> no, thanks. Tastefully dirty. Tastefully. I'll pass. You're not interested? No. Huge cock. Ah, 
Oh, that's great. <laughs> no, thank you. Have a nice weekend. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, that, that was a little less modest approach. <laughs> that was awesome. But, uh, all right, we tried. <laughs> what was it? Me look sodomy. Me look sodomy five. 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 <laughs> look, that guy has the weirdest voice.